In this video, I'll share 10 tips to improve earnings of your Helium hotspot without physically moving it. At the end of this video, I'll also talk about a few points that you should avoid doing. Hey folks, this is Roy and welcome back to my channel Eigentech. The main source of earning of your Helium hotspot is the participation in Proof of Coverage Challenge. The proof of coverage challenge has three different kind of activities. The first one is creating a challenge, second is sending a beacon signal and third is receiving witness from the beacon of other helium hotspots. Now the first two activities are limited. So you can create one challenge every six hours or four challenges per day that is set by the current chain variable and sending beacon signal happens one or twice a day. So the earnings from these events are limited. However, there is no limitation on receiving witnesses. So you should try to improve or increase number of witnesses seen by your Helium hotspot. So the points that I am going to discuss are basically going to improve or increase the number of valid witnesses for your Helium hotspot and hence it will increase HNT earnings. Tip number one, antenna placement. The most important factor after the location of your helium hotspot is the placement of your antenna. Note that an outdoor antenna will always perform better compared to the identical indoor antenna. I know that many of you might be using the indoor unit as shown in this picture. But using the helium miner in this way you are losing more than half of the earnings. That happens because of two reasons. First, the glass window is blocking the beacon signals from other helium hotspots. And second, when you send a beacon signal, a majority of the signal is lost within the house and where a part of it only goes out through the window. So that is why you are losing witnesses in that case. So basically the goal is to get your antenna outside. If you can purchase outdoor antenna and mount it like this on the top of a roof, that's great. But even if you can't do that, you need to find a way to somehow get your antenna outside of your window. Note that even the stock antennas can act as an outdoor antenna. I know that the bobcat antennas and the rack antennas are weatherproof. Just you have to make sure that water doesn't go inside the connectors. So in that case, you can use some suction cap with uh, clamps and try to use non-metal clamps, some plastic clamps like this or even you can use a velcro tip. So whenever you can place your antenna outside, the number of witnesses will increase dramatically and hence your earnings also will go up. Tip number two, antenna height. You might have already heard that higher is the better. This is because any obstruction around your antenna like trees, buildings will block the RF signal emitted by your antenna. Also, it will block the RF signals coming from other helium hotspots. So if you can place your antenna at a uh, at high enough location, then your signal will reach further out and you will be also able to witness signals from other helium hotspots. If you can see the roofs of 75% of the buildings around yours from the location of your antenna, that is already a very good height. Tip number three, antenna gain. Note that Higher gain antenna will not always perform better. Actually, the optimal antenna gain depends on your location, the height of your antenna, as well as the topography of your location. I have already discussed the optimal antenna in a separate video. You can check that out for more details. Tip number four, tilt of the antenna. This is actually an uncommon point. You might have heard that the antenna should always be vertical, but this is not strictly true. In particular, if you live in a high rise building and most of the other hotspots at, are at a lower height, in that case, you might want to tilt your antenna a little bit so that it can have more witnesses. Ideally, you should not probably try to bend it by more than 30 degrees, uh, but you can experiment with different angles and try to find out the best angle for which you obtain maximum number of witnesses. But note that the angle should be with respect to the vertical. Okay. Tip number five, antenna connection. So the connector of the cable or the antenna which is connected to the minor side should not be too tight or too loose. If it's too tight, like you try to over tighten with a plier, you might actually break the connector inside and that will damage the product. Or if it's too loose, then you will lose out signal. 
So what you should do, you should try to tighten it with your hand. Um, you should just apply the maximum torque that you can apply with your hand and that should be good enough. It has been found in some cases that the antenna connector was actually loose inside the miner. If you believe that that is your case, you should then open the box and tighten the connections. These were about antenna parameters. Now we'll move to few other points. Tip number six, cable length and quality. You should always try to use the minimum length of cable that is possible. This is because the longer the cable is, the more will be the loss. So your signal will not be able to reach out as far. So try to use the minimum length of cable. And for cable quality, the better the quality is, the less will be the loss. So you should try to use a better quality cable. It will not be important if uh, the cable length is a few feet, let's say two to six feet. But if you are using, let's say 40 or 50 feet of cable, you should definitely try to use a better quality cable. The common ones are LMR 200, LMR 400, LMR 600. While using the cable, try to make sure that you have the correct mating connectors. And if your antenna is outdoor in particular, like on top of a pole or something, uh, you should always try to use a lightning arrester. In some cases, if you are planning to just um, mount it outside your, your window and you cannot use a regular uh, circular or cylindrical cable, there are options for flat cables. Those are called flat window cable as you can see in the pictures here. Tip number seven, internet connection. A one Mbps speed should be good enough for your helium miner. Whenever possible, try to use Ethernet cable because that is more reliable. However, I have found that the performance of my helium miner with Ethernet or with Wi-Fi is the same. If you are using Wi-Fi, try to use a 2.4 GHz band because it has more range. Also, if you are using Wi-Fi, try to perform a test at the location of your helium miner. So basically take your mobile phone and perform an internet speed test at the location of your helium miner so that you can make sure it has a good internet speed. Also note that uh, the amount of data consumed currently by the helium miners have increased. So currently it's probably more than 100 GB per month. So if you're using an unlimited plan, you are fine. But in some cases there might be a limit on the high speed data connection and after that the speed might drop. In that case, the performance of your helium miner will degrade. So just uh, make sure that you have high speed internet connection throughout. Tip number eight, fix relay. If you do not fix relay, uh, your miner will still earn HNT, but it will definitely lose out some HNT. In particular, it will not be able to send out uh, beacon signals as frequently and the challenges might not be accepted as frequently. So try to fix the relay. I have already discussed that in a separate video. Uh, check that out. However, uh, if you are using a LTE based internet service or SIM card based internet service, you are most likely under CG NAT or carrier red network address translation. And in that case, you might have to ask your internet service provider to provide you a public IP so that you can perform the port forwarding. Otherwise, the relay won't go away. Also, it might be possible that in some cases you have set up your Helium hotspot uh, under the network of a company or in a big apartment building. In that case, the company might have a separate parent router and your building might also have a separate parent router to which you might not have access. In that case, you will not be able to fix relay and you have to use other solutions like uh, VPN or some hardware solution. I'll provide a link for a virtual gateway in the description and you can use also my coupon code to get a discount. But those are paid services and you have to spend some money every month to keep it out of relay. Tip number nine, improving transmit scale. You might have heard that the transmit scale doesn't affect your earnings, but that is not completely true. If you have a suboptimal transmit scale, it indirectly affects your earnings as I have discussed in this video. You'll also learn whether there is a possibility of improving your transmit scale without physically moving it. So please watch that video and try to improve your transmit scale. Tip number 10, declaring correct antenna parameters in the Helium app. So after the implementation of POC version 11, 
the antenna gain parameters are used to calculate the validity of a witness. So you should try to mention the correct antenna parameter in the helium app. The height you can also mention but that is not currently being used in the calculation. So these were 10 points that you can try to improve the performance of your helium hotspot. Now we'll discuss a few points that you should avoid doing. Number one, don't place your antenna horizontally as I have shown in this picture. This will severely degrade the performance of your helium hotspot as you will not be able to witness other helium hotspots. This happens because of a property called the polarization of the electromagnetic field. Basically when you place the antenna vertically, the electromagnetic field is polarized vertically. If you place it horizontally, it will be polarized horizontally. And now vertically and horizontally polarized electromagnetic fields do not interact with each other. That is why you will lose witnesses. Point two, don't use two antennas. There are some ideas that you might want to split the cable and use a low gain antenna for the hotspots close by and use a high gain antenna to reach further out. But that is not going to be very effective. In particular, it will be actually bad for witnessing other hotspots because there will be at least a 4 dB loss through the cable and connectors. So you will actually receive less witnesses in that case. Point number three, don't restart your miner frequently. It is very common not to have any minor activity for several hours, in particular if you live in a not so crowded area. Also due to blockchain issues or network outages, sometimes the miner doesn't do anything for one or two days. If you see that the other miners around yours have a lot of activity whereas yours do not have, it's flatlined. In that case, you might want to just restart it once and leave it as it is. Let it sink and start performing again. Doing several restarts actually might hurt in that case. Point number four, don't try to operate the helium miner in extreme conditions. So the standard operating temperature is zero degrees Celsius to 55 degrees Celsius. If your miner becomes too hot, try to improve the ventilation by maybe blowing some air through a fan or change the location of the miner so that it doesn't become too hot. Also, if it becomes too cold, it might degrade the performance of your helium miner. So keep that in mind. I hope these points will help you in improving earnings of your helium hotspot. If you have more ideas, let me know in the comment section. That's all for today. Thanks for watching guys and get cryptonized.